What's going on everyone, it's Sean here and in today's video I'll be reviewing the Adidas Yeezy 500 Desert Rat in the blush colorway. These dropped February 14th for a US retail price of $200 and a retail price here in Canada of $280. Here in Canada, these were available on adidas.ca. They were also available on the Adidas Confirmed app, which is where my fiance lucked out and got my size for me. They were also available at select boutiques such as Livestock and Haven. This marks the second colorway of the Yeezy 500 model, and in general, it's the first Yeezy model by Adidas that does not feature Adidas Boost technology. So the box that these come with looks like this. So this is your standard Adidas Yeezy box. On the top, instead of 350 or 700, here we have 500, and then on the front, we have Yeezy 500 made by Adidas and the size label. As for the shoes themselves, there's no doubt that Kanye West loves to push that design envelope, making the most controversial silhouette that he can possibly make. So these 500s are probably the most controversially designed Yeezys so far. The entire shoe is done in this blush color, and the upper is comprised of different types of materials. Taking a look at the toe box, you can see this is constructed using a hairy suede. Running along the sides of both sides of the shoe, we have this tumbled leather. Outlining the edge of the leather, we have 3M. And overlaid on top of this, at the very bottom of the upper, we have this fuse-like material that basically serves as the mudguard. The upper half of the upper of the shoe is constructed using a very open mesh. And once again, we have more hits of suede found along this ankle collar area, as well as on these two pods that are found on either side of the shoe, forming the eyelets for the laces. Taking a look at the back heel, here we have this base layer of mesh. Overlaid on top of this, we have smooth leather, and then overlaid on top of that, we have this suede once again. These Yeezy 500s come with a padded tongue that's constructed using mesh that's a bit more tightly wound than the mesh found on the side panels. Overlaid on top of the mesh, we have what feels like synthetic leather that's constructed in this peanut-like shape, and this also helps to hold the laces in a very unique lacing system. So unlike models like the Yeezy 350 or the Yeezy 350 V2, where it's constructed using prime knit, this shoe is much more bulkier overall, so throughout the upper it feels fairly padded. Taking a look at the insole, so these feature a removable ortholite insole that features the Adidas branding and Yeezy branding on the heel. On the back side of the insole, so this is done in green with pods found along the forefoot and the heel done in yellow, along with this pod along the midfoot done in red. So I'm not sure if these pods are supposed to increase the comfort on this insole, but overall this insole is fairly thin and honestly it didn't feel like these pods were doing anything at all from a comfort standpoint. So the bottom half of these Yeezy 500s reminds me of the midsole and the outsole of the KB3s, which was Kobe Bryant's third signature sneaker with Adidas. So taking a closer look at this midsole, you can see it's constructed using this podular-like design. So it looks like it just has these bulges that are protruding out the sides of the shoe. On the medial side, we have this Adidas logo, and on the lateral side, we have this Adiprene Plus logo. So of course, that means contained within this midsole is Adiprene Plus technology. Adiprene Plus is a cushioning system utilized by Adidas mostly for their performance model sneakers. So it's typically found in running shoes along the forefoot of the shoe, and it's supposed to give you a lot of energy return and a lot of that bounce back feeling. Flipping these over to the bottom, so here we have your outsole. So this is entirely done in rubber in this blush color, and as you can see, this has this podular look to it. In terms of the comfort on these, so based off of the Yeezys that I've owned, which are the 350s, the 350v2s, the 700s, and the 750s, these ones I'd have to rank at dead last. Unfortunately, this Adiprene Plus is pretty stiff on feet, and because I'm just walking around in them and I'm not running in them, I honestly didn't feel too much cushioning underneath my foot. It feels pretty stiff, but if you are a fan of shoes that have a much more stable and stiff cushioning setup, then you'll probably like these ones. I would have preferred even if they included a thicker insole with these shoes. In terms of sizing, so I got these in a size 10 and a half, which is the same size that I got in the Yeezy 700s and the 350 V2s. In comparing all three silhouettes in the same size, I'd say that the 350 V2s is by far the most snug, the 700s is right in the middle, and then this one is the most roomy. So I'm curious to see how these would have fit in a size 10. I suspect that they would have provided a better fit overall. From a width perspective, they fit me perfectly, but there was a little bit more excess room in the toe box than I would have liked. So if I had to make a call, I'd say that these run pretty true to size, unless you have wider feet, then going up a half size would be perfect. From a quality standpoint, aside from some loose threads that I simply just cut off, I had no problems with my pair. These Yeezy 500s were pretty well constructed and the quality of the materials was decent overall.
So now let me lace these up and show you guys how these look on feet. So overall, I'd probably rank these at the very bottom of my list when it comes to Adidas Yeezys. That's not to say that I dislike them. The design of these is interesting, it's very unique, but it's not going to be for everyone. I have a feeling that this will be a shoe that's wearable and popular during today's time, but I'm curious to see how these will be regarded in 5-10 to 10 years down the road. So let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of these Adidas Yeezy 500s. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give me that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you're new to this channel and give me a follow on Instagram as well at sgo8 and be sure to check out my website at seango.ca. So until next time, thank you guys so much for tuning in and I'll catch you guys in my next review.